Alrighty guys, today we're going to be talking about Clint and time interrupts. So let's start with what is or who is Clint? So Clint is the core local interrupter. So the job of Clint is it lives just outside of your risk CPU or we call them hearts in the risk community. So this lives right outside and it does a few extra responsibilities to help out the heart. So what are these jobs? So few they start with is it defines a few MMI locations. So this is a place that everyone in the risk community agrees in memory as a very certain responsibility. So for instance, time, everyone agrees upon an address where time will live. So if we load the value from that address, we know that we'll have the amount of time in milliseconds since the start of the program. And as with using this time and time CMP, we have timer functionality. So Clint literally just stays outside of the CPU and it's constantly polling, seeing if the time interrupt should happen. And if it does, it tells the heart, hey, stop, you have an interrupt. Alrighty, so like I said before, how do these timer interrupts actually work? So outside of the heart, Clint is just constantly comparing time CMP and time. And if at any moment, time is greater than or equal to time CMP, the heart, um, Clint goes, all right, stop, time will interrupt, and it sends it to the associated heart. So that's the job of Clint and how the interrupts work. Okay, so now we know how they work. How do we actually use them? So let's do an example here. So say we want to interrupt in half a second. And since everything we're going to be using is milliseconds, let's convert that to milliseconds. So we want to interrupt in 500 milliseconds. So our job is to set time CMP to the time we want the interrupt to occur. So how do we do this? Well, time is how much time is currently elapsed. We add 500 to that because we want to interrupt in 500 milliseconds. And then we store that value into time CMP. So then as time keeps growing and growing and growing, eventually, like what um, the heart is up there doing, time will be greater than time CMP and we will have an interrupt to the heart. Okay, so let's actually put this into some code. So let's assume that two seconds have started, have passed since the start of the program. So time is equal to 2000. So that place in memory that we call time that everyone agrees upon has a value of 2000. And let's say again, we want to interrupt in half a second or 500 milliseconds. How do we do that? So on the left-hand side here, I provided the risk code. So this is one way to work with these MMIO locations. I have a dot data section where I define time and time CMP to the addresses that we guys give you and that everyone agrees upon. Now, you don't have to do it like this, but the advantage to this is now when we come down to code, if I want to get this memory address, all I have to do is load word into D0 with time. So this just makes it a lot more readable. Uh, you guys could do load immediate, but remembering that's a pseudo instruction, so it actually does a few other things and then replace time with this address here. But for readability, we recommend most of the time to follow this kind of structure to have this in data and then in text, you can just use load word. All right, so first we gotta get the address of time, which we do here with this load word. Then we got to get the amount of time that's actually passed. So we load from T0 into T1. So now T1 should contain the value 2000 because that's how much time has um, occurred since the start of the program. And now what we do is we do the time CMP equals time plus 500. So T1 is our time. We add 500, store that back into T1. Now what we do is we need to store the time CMP. So I first load the address of time CMP or this value right here into T2. So now in T2, we have the address of time CMP and in T1, we have time plus 500. So this store word finishes it for us. It sets time CMP equal to time plus 500. Then over here, you can see this is the assembled code exactly that was over here but over here now it's actually been assembled. So you can see here, this load word is also a pseudo instruction. So 
what it's doing here is it's trying to put this value into t0 right and it does this in two instructions so it has this ru pick here so it puts this address here into x5 and then it loads from that address into x5 so what this is doing is rars has already stored this value you have right here someplace in memory that someplace in memory is fc10 and then once it has that place in memory it can just load from there okay so that's basically what this compiles down to then here's the rest and here we could see another load word another are you pick and then another load word after it but everything else compiles down to what we normally expect so this load word here and this load word they as you can see one of them is just one line and one of them is two that's just because of what comes after and what our arguments are but both of them are valid just you guys got to know the difference between the two so that's how timer interrupts work in risk so take your time to go through understand this you guys will do absolutely great